Okay, welcome to Java Programming One. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss about graphical user interface. Uh, we already did most of the theory in our previous uh, lectures. Uh, we already know how to use the buttons, uh, creating the windows first using the JFrame, also labels and test fields. So as we said previously, some objects again contain information and those information can determine how the object should be represented visually. And for example, a level is an object. How it represented visually is different from buttons or different from test field. And each of them have their own functions. So most green components are again graphical objects. Uh, we can have some effect on how the components get drawn. And as we said earlier, we did this in our Google Lecture 2 using the applet. We use the paint method of an applet. So here we're going to look for some few examples of graphical objects. And here we are going to look at the program named the Smiling Face program, which draws a face by defining the paint component. So in this program, uh, we are going to use applets. Then also we are going to see, see some few examples later on. So this is our program. Here we are using the swing package. So we have import javax.swing.jframe. Again, we need a jframe to get our window frame. Uh, again, the name of this file is a smiley face so our main class is smiling face and this is our main method uh, here we are creating an object named frame using again the jframe class from the swing package so after we create the frame we set the default close option for the frame to be JFrame exit on close. And we spoke about this uh, JFrame uh, methods and also the attributes. So here we have JFrame dot exit on close. Then of course we need a panel. So here we have the smiling face panel. Uh, class uh, panel equal to new smiley face. So this is our again constructor for the smiley face panel class, which we will go through in a minute. So first thing we do, we create our again as we said in the previous lectures. So, so we create our frame object. Then we also get our panel. Then we use the hard method and also the get content pane. Uh, we know the get content pane method with that is going to associate with the object, the frame object. So here we have frame dot get content pane. Then we call the method to pack to the frame. And also we when we run this program, we want to see the frame. So we set the visibility to true. Again, our previous lectures we discussed about frame class the possible attributes and also the possible methods. Uh, that's the properties and also the behavior of a frame class objects. We discussed that already. One of the method is set visible. If I set a visible to false, which means when I run the program, my window will not show. Here our main window name is the frame. So we use the JFrame class to create our main window. So now let's, if we run this program, again, this is what we get. So this will be our output. But again, in the main method right now is that we create the frame. Also, we have the panel. We had the content to the panel. And also we set the visible. The visible. Now, now we will go through the, the class. So demonstrate the use of separate panel class. 
here again, we import the Java Swim package with the abstract window tools. And we have the smiling face panel extend to J panel. Again, this is the concept of inheritance, which we may discuss later. Now we set our base X to 120 and base Y to 60. So this is a constant variable. And we are going to use this to set the window size. So the constructor to set up the main characteristics of the panel. Uh, here we can see that when we run our program, we can see that our background is blue. Our background is blue. The reason why the constructor smiling face panel, we call the method set background color to blue. Again, this method is a beauty method inside the J panel class. So we can use it. We can also use set preferred size. This will be the dimension 320 by 200. Then we also can set the font type. And the font type here will be array bold size is 16. So the font name is array, the type is bold and the size is 16. So this is our again, constructor setting the background of our window, getting the size of it, and the content and the font type we are going to use. So next, we are going to have the draw a face method. So the method name is paint components. And here we are using the super again, the concept of inheritance, because this is the super or we say the parent class method paint component. Uh, remember the default and uh, we so here we have the graphics, the type is page. So page will be like our object now. That's our object. So first we set the page color to yellow. And we can go back to the output. You will see that we have a, this is the face. We are trying to get this face. So it's yellow. Now the measurement of the highs, the leaves, we have to set everything up. So first thing we do again, the, the whole head is yellow. So we set the color to yellow. Then they will fill over. Uh, X by Y, the base X base Y is 80 by 80, and that's our head, setting the head. And this is like using the over object as the head. Then on the year also, we have an over there. And we can see, let's go back and see the object. You can see that this is an over object. And the year also, we have an over, but they are very small. So the same color. So you can see that here, we are setting it to again, the here to 90 by 40. And based on the positions. Then we set the color black. For the eyes, it will be black. Again, base X and Y, 15 by seven. And then, we have second eye 45, 30, 15 by seven also. So this is the, the positions, the positions for base X and base Y, 45, 30. So we can see the size. We go back to the object. We can see the eyes again, we set the color to black and the position of the drawing also is there, and also the size. So the same thing we have to do the, to the pupils. The same object over again, position 25, 31, 50, and 31, five by five. Then we set the eyebrows, 
again the base x position 20 25 15 by 7 and the second one also 15 by 7. we can see that the eyebrows and the highs are the same 15 7 15 7. And the same thing we set for the nose and also the mouth. Then we set the color. This time we want to have a test drawstring. Always remember that you are a unique. And we have to set the position where the, the test will start. Then just like everyone, another string with their positions. So that will be the, the output here. Consider the two tests we just saw it. Now why always remember that you are unique is at the top. We set the position of the starting string. And you also will set the position so we can see. So smiley face example as we should, we saw every swing component has a paint component. Every swing component has a paint component method. And that's what we use throughout. You can see in our, we say super dot paint component, the object page. Now we use page throughout. So page will be our element. So here we say the paint component method accept a graphics object that represents the graphics contest for the panel. In this case, we call it, again, the name can be any name here, we name it page. So paint component, again, we take the argument of the graphic object, in this case, called page. Then we set, then we start drawing all the possible objects on the page. Now drawing something always, this is two dimensions. So we have X and Y. So the starting of the object is very important. So you can see that again, all the object that we were creating, the head, we have to set the size and the starting position, default positions. Here, for example, minus five plus 20 plus 30 plus 20, et cetera, with the size. So we define the paint component method to draw the face with appropriate calls to the graphics methods. Again, these are built-in methods for the graphics. Uh, the object, actually we use only one object, the over. We can draw it or we can fill it with colors. So know the difference between drawing on a panel and also adding other going components to a panel. So when we are drawing to a panel, first we need to get the panel, the, the object, uh, the object that will be represented in the, on the panel. Then we use the possible methods to draw. Uh, here we need a head, we need the ears, we need, or if we need a table, I know table will have uh, maybe two legs and a top of four legs and a top depends how you want to draw your object. But you have to start swear. So this need a lot of planning and hard work because you have to know the position where each object is starting to meet the other, uh, other components. So here we have another example called the splat example. So the splat example is structured a bit differently it will draw a set of colored circles on the panel, but each circle is represented as a separate object that contains its own graphical information. So previously we can see that we have only page. So the object is one unit. We are drawing the ears, the eyes, the eyebrows, everything in on the page. But here we are going to have a separate object now. So let's see how this code works. So again, we start with the main method first. We create our, again, the same concept. We import our swing package and Astra window tools. Our main class is Sprat. So the file name is Sprat.java. We create our frame object, which we call frame again. 
Again, the name can be any name. And uh, here, the title will be splat. Then we set our default close option to JFrame exit on close. Then we call our get content pin and also hard method to add our new Sprite panel. So we need to create our Sprite panel now. Uh, we set it visible to true and also call the pack method. So this is how our output will look. So you, here you can see that we are drawing four, excuse me, five different circles. So it's like different objects with different size and also color. So we start with the Sprite panel extend to the J panel. So here you can see that we declare five different circles from circle to circle five, actually six. Then we have a constructor to create five circle objects. So here you can see that we are, we are not creating only one object as previous one, previous example. So we're creating five different again. Object. So we start from circle one to circle five. And we can see that each circle have what? Different size and start from different position. And also we have a, a color, different colors. Then we set the background. So the background is five uh, black. So let's see our pro. So we can see our window or the panel. The background is black. And we set the background color dot black. Calling the set background method. So here again, we start with our panel. So we have a paint component and super dot page. This time we are going to draw circle one up to five. So we are drawing separate again object. Then our circle again, we have a diameter of and then X and Y axis. And also we have the color. Those are the possible attribute for attribute for the circle class. So we have to construct that means we have to initialize all these four attributes. So we set the diameter to size, the shade, uh, color to shade. S will be upper X, Y will be upper Y. And this four variable that we assign to the instant variable are the argument. So this is a constructor with a, a parameter, which means the main method. That's why we saw our main method. We were able to assign the size, the color type, the X and Y values. Uh, so next is the draw method. So drawing, we need to set the color up. Then we are drawing the circle using the fill over with the X, Y, and diameter, and diameter. Then we also set the diameter to whatever size is given. And we set the color to whatever color is given. So we can call the method set color, or set the, um, this is called the mutators. This we also can set the X and Y values. Then assessors means to get a diameter, get X, get color, and also get Y. So that will be our program. And again, the output is what we saw previously. So this will be our output. So what we did here is that in the main method, we create our framework. Always we need a frame object. That will be the window, the whole window, the object. Then by default for closing, we set it on exit on closing. Then we get a get content pane with the hard method to hard our panel. This, this case is called a spark panel. Then we set the visible of it. Now the panel is everything. So here we have the Sprite panel. This is where we are going to, again, create our panel, create all the objects that will be in the panel. In this case, we have five different objects. 
And this is a constructor. The reason why this, because we saw later on that our circle class, which is giving here, have four instant variables. And this is the class with four. So that's why here we can see our circle have four attributes. Again, the size, the color, the X and Y values. So here we say a graphical user interface, interface in Java is created with at least three kinds of objects. We need the components, we need the events, and we need a listener. And we have previously again discussed about these components, which are uh, objects like labels, buttons, test fields, and menus. If we are using applet, we can use the paint program to get our object. So some components are containers that hold and also organize other components. Uh, example is the frame. Frame is like the main window. And inside the frame is going to hold all the labels, but in a test fields. Panel also the same thing below the title is our panel. Or if we are using applets. If I have a dialog box, it's most likely I may have a test field in the dialog box and a label to give me instruction what to do, what to enter. So here we say some components are containers that hold and also organize other components. So a very good example would be dialog box. For example, if I want to print something with Microsoft Word, when I click file print, I may have a print dialog box. It would ask me what's the printer name. So that's the label where I enter the printer name or select the printer name will be the test field. How many copies I want to print? That's a label instruction. Then the test field I'm, is where I'm going to enter the number of items I will print. So that's the whole concept here in going applications. Going applications consists again of graphic objects. So event is very important. Most of the events in our program here will be associated to a button click, but we have different types of events. So here we say an event is, is an object that represents some activity to which we may want to respond. So an event like clicking a button means whatever code associated with the button. Let's say I write a program to find a sum of two numbers. We were asked to enter the two numbers. After that, I'll click a button and it will add the two numbers and give me the result on my screen. So that will be the event of on click. But we also have event of a move. When I move a mouse, maybe something may happen. The color of a label or color of an object may change or may be active, etc. Or the mouse is dragged, that's another event. Uh, the mouse button is clicked or graphical button is pressed or a keyboard key is pressed, or a time is expired. So when a time is expired, maybe some activity will kick on. And we have event and listeners. So in Java application program interface, it contains several classes that represent a typical events or Java API. API stands for application program interface. So components such as graphical button it may generate or fire an event that when it occurs. So when I click on the button, some events will occur. We set up a listener object to respond to an event when it occurs. So that's why in our previous program, when we find the error of a rectangle, we ask in the GUI, we ask the user to enter and the length and also the width. Then when we click calculate button, it will give us the result. When we click exit button, the program will close. So the calculate button, you can say when we run, we run the code or we write the code, we also include the action listener uh, method, which is very important. Because here we have to design a listener object to take ever or whatever action is taking place uh, is the one listing and then apply. So we, we can design listener object to take whatever action appropriate when an event occurs. So this is events and listeners. 
we have the component, we have the listener. So a component object generates an event. When you generate an event, the listener, a corresponding listener object is designed to respond to the event. That's how you see the code in the button. Since we are associating a, a, an event of button click, we have to have the listener method. Because the listener is the one who's going to respond to the event that takes place. In this case, my event is when I click on calculate button, it will give me the result of the length times the width, which is the area of the rectangle. So when the event occurs, the component again calls the appropriate method of the listener, passing an object that describes the event. So Gwen development, we say to create a Java program that uses a Gwen, we must first instantiate and set up the necessary component. We discussed this earlier time. Uh, in console application, I can just go straight and write the algorithm and then write the code. But with Gwen, maybe I may use uh, uh, some model application or paper and pen. I may have to draw, design the window uh, what, how many objects I need, the position of each object, we have to organize uh, everything down before again the coding process. So we, uh, we instantiate and set up the necessary components by designing the window and this element. Then we implement the listener classes for any event we care about. So if an event will happen when I click a label or I click a button, and then I have to establish it or implement it. Then establish relationship between the listener and the component that generate the corresponding event. Now let's explore how some new components and see how they all come together. So first is button. A push button is defined by the J button class. So if I want to create a button object, I have to use the J button class. And also you can generate an action event. So first is the buttons, a push button is defined by the J button class. And also you generate an action event. Now the push counter example displays a push button that increment the counter each time it is pushed. And so let's see this example here. So first we have the main method. So we start with our uh, package that we want to use. Again, swing package, JFrame. Uh, the main class is push counter. We have our main method. So we create our, again, the JFrame object can be any name. Here we are using frame most of the time. So we create our frame object called the frame. I mean, JFrame object called the frame. And we also set the default close operation to exit on close. Then, of course, we need, as we said earlier, we need the content pane. So we call the method get content pane, and also the hard method to add it, the content pane uh, to the again the frame object. Then we set it to visible. So when we run this program, this is what we get. But let's see again our class in the push count, uh, push counter panel. Here they told us that when we click on the button, it will increment by one. So here we need again the abstract window tools. An event will take place here, so we get the event class. And we're also using the swing package. So we extend to J panel as usual. This is where we create our main panel. So we need a a method and a instant variable name count, and also an object name push, and also label. So this will be our button. The button name is push, and also we have one a label. The name is label. So we start with the constructor to set up the going. Here we set the count to zero. Beginning, and also we create our new button. And we have the test push me on top of the button. So this is like a, a constructor for J button. 
the argument is what will be on the bottom. Then as we said earlier, we did this previously. This is clicking the button will generate an event. An event need a listener. So here, again, our button name is push. We have it here, push. So you can say here, we say push dot hard action listener and then new button listener. So this is the method that we list in and react to any event that takes place. Then we are adding this action listener to associate with the push button. And also we have a label here. And the label will say push pushes. And whatever, how many, how many times you push. So here we had a push and also we had a label. Uh, we set the preferred size to 300 by 40 and also the background color is one. Then we have the button listener, implementing action listener. So here we have the method public void action perform, action event and event. And what this is the, the listener, what it will respond the event. So when I click on the button, the response is just to increment the count by one. Then print the test on the label pushes how many time I did the count, one or two in the amount. So this is again our listener reaction based on the event. And I think we saw it here. So this is the output. When I run this program, uh, I push again, I click on the button. I will see only the button and the window. So if I click on the button seven times and we stop, my output will be pushes seven. And that is the reaction of the action perform the event from the listener. So here's the push counter example. Here we say the component of the, of the GUEN are the buttons and also the label to display the counter. Next to the label, we see, uh, next to the button, we say a label which display how many pushes we did, uh, or how many uh, counting. So the push counter panel class represent the panel used to display the button and also the label. And also the push counter panel class is derived from what J panel. So we saw the keyword extend using inheritance extend. Then the constructor of the push counter panel will set up the element of the going and also initialize the counter to zero. And we saw that also. So what we mean is here, uh, the constructor of the push counter panel set the count to zero. We create our object with the test push me on the object, which in this case is the button. And of course we need a, we need to have the action listener to react to the event. So listener classes are written by implementing the listener interface. So button listener class implement the action listener interface. And we also say the only method in the action listener interface is the action perform method. But the Java API contains interfaces for many types of events. And we may discuss this more detail in when we start with again, a going on chapter six. So yeah, push counter example, we say the push counter panel constructor Normally, we instantiate the button listener object and also it will establish the relationship between the button and also the listener by the call to action, hard action listener. Now, when you use the presses, when user presses the button, the button component creates an action event called the action perform method of the listener then the actual perform method increment the counter. We saw that method. And also we set the test of the label. So we have some question here, which object in the push counter example generate the event? 
And here we say the button the one we click. So button component generate the event. When I click on the button, the event generate. Then what did it do then? It will call the action perform. Action perform is the method is the listener. So the action perform method of the listener object that had been registered with it. So next is the test field. We see how buttons work. The concept of test field also the same. So let's look at another GUI example that uses another type of component, a test field. A test field normally allow user to enter an input into the test. And if the cursor is in the test field, the test field object generates an action, then, then whatever uh, reaction to it, it depends on what code we, we wrote. One thing we should know that anytime we enter an input into a test field, the data type of the, that input is a string. So if I want to do a calculation, I have to call maybe a pass method, uh, pass int or pass uh, whatever method to convert the strings to the type I need. If it's pass int, I need the int. Then I'll do my calculation. When I finish and I want to display the result in the test field or a label or anywhere in the GUIN, I have to change it back to a string because any data type, the items on a GUIN is always a string data type. So let's see how this program works. Here we are going to have a Fahrenheit uh, change to sensors. So our main class is Fahrenheit. Again, we import the swing package, the JFrame. We create our frame object as usual. We set the default close operation to exit on close. Then we create our panel object name panel. Then we as call the content pay and hard for the panel. Uh, I mean for the frame. Then we close. And then we set the visible to true. Again, this is as usual, always the main method, we create our frame object, set the default close operation. We need a panel after we get the frame. Panel is below the title bar where the component will go to. So we get our panel, then we set our visible the frame to true. So now let's see our Fahrenheit um, panel again extend to J panel this will be our panel so here we're going to have a one label uh, label one then another label uh, okay this input level output level result level so we need three levels which means we're going to get two input and our result also be displayed on the label then we also need the J test field uh, for us. So we need only one input. I mean, and the test field is where we enter. So here, this is our constructor. Remember how many items we have here. So input level, we say enter the Fahrenheit temperature. Output level, will be temperature in Celsius, that is instruction. The result will be whatever value, so right now it will be dash dash, whatever result we get will be displayed. Then we need a test field also, so we create a Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit object uh, using the J test field class and, uh, and uh, item five means we cannot enter, enter more than five items, it can be characters, digits. Then of course we need a action listener. So we have the hard action listener. So we need to add all our labels in sequential order. So the first label I want to see on my screen at the top will be my input level, then Fahrenheit, then output level, then the result. And I set the dimension to 300 by 75 the window, then also set the background color to yellow. So you can see, I think we have the output somewhere here. You can see our output is yellow. I mean, the background is yellow. 
uh, we saw the constructor Fahrenheit when we create the frame. Then this is the test field. We enter any value. And then we have the labels. We can see the first one is enter Fahrenheit, the second one temperature and sensors. So that's what we saw here, input label, output label, temperature and sensors. We saw the test field, we go with the input. So what we had, you see that we had a label first, then the test field, then another label, then the result is another label. We set the dimension to 300 by 75. The background color of the window, as we saw it, it was yellow. Then here we represent an action listener for the temperature input. So this is where we're going to have the formula. And this is where we are having the action perform method. And so this is the method that we, we had to the event that take place. So we have variant temp and sensual temp. We get our test. Then we do our, see that what this is what I was saying. When we get the test from the, whatever value we enter, the data type is string. So we use the pass int to convert it to integer before we can do a calculation on it. When we're doing calculation, we want our data type to be either decimal value or a whole number, not a string. For example, I can do uh, Charles plus William. Uh, maybe to give me Charles Williams together. So 32 plus 40 will be 3240. So the plus will act as a concave. Now, if you use a minus then, or a division, then uh, an error. So here we can see we change it to int. Then we do our calculation. The Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 by 9. Then the answer we get, we want the answer to be string. So we call to string method to print the essential temperature, which is int, but it to convert to string, we convert it to string before we print it on the screen. So in the Fahrenheit example, we say, like the push counter example, the group is set up in a separate panel class. And also the temp listener in a class define the listener for the action event generated by the test field. And also the Fahrenheit panel constructor will again instantiate or create the listener and add it to the test field. When the user types a temperature and presses the enter button, we get a, this will generate an event and an action performed we we'll react to it and give us the result. So this will be the conclusion of our lecture. Again, this lecture, we continue with the GUI, graphical user interface application, the concept about uh, what is a JFrame, the panel. J again, the JFrame is the main window with the title, but then the, where the content, the components or the objects, goes to in the going is called a panel. So always we need a frame and the panel before we can create any object and put it in the panel like buttons, test field. And you can see the whole concept again is object oriented and programming concept. We have a class name JFrame. I create an object frame. If I want to use any built-in object of the J class and uh, method of the J class a J frame class, then I have to have the object name dot the method of the J frame class. The object type is the J frame class. So any method that J frame class have, the object can use it. So again, this is a whole concept of object oriented programming. But here again, we are dealing with an event. Object oriented program, most of the time we deal with an event. So we have to have the action perform the listener, etc. So listener normally react to what event, whatever event that takes place. So if I write a code for a button that when you click the button, then I have to have a action perform method 
which is the listener to reply to whatever event that takes place. So again, wish everybody the best and uh, thank you. See you in the next lectures.